Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. We begin with Allah's blessed name. We praise Him and we glorify Him as He ought to be praised and glorified. And we pray for peace and for blessings on all His noble messengers. And in particular on the last of them all, the blessed Prophet Muhammad. Sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam as we greet you from uh, Rawalpindi, the city of Rawalpindi uh, in Pakistan on this the third day of Shawwal. Uh, the month of Shawwal in the year 1442 with Assalamu Alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, we want to share with you something we've not done before. And that is that, uh, that there is a great war which is coming and very many of you already are convinced that that war is coming. And it will be the great war prophesied by our Prophet wasalam, in this hadith, for example, which offers a timeline of events of Akhir zaman I have quoted this hadith so many times that you are already familiar with it. I don't need to quote the Arabic anymore that he said to his companion Mu'az ibn Jabal radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said that when Jerusalem is center stage in the world, at that time Medina would be in full-on desolation. I'm giving you the meaning of the Arabic text, not the exact translation. And when Medina is playing no role at all in world affairs, at that time the great war will take place. He calls it the Malhama. And we know from another hadith that 99 out of every 100 who fight in that war would be killed. And hence it has to be a war using weapons of mass destruction to kill 99% of combatants. There's never been a war like that all in all of history. The Malhama has not as yet taken place. The Christians and the Jews call it Armageddon. And Armageddon has not as yet taken place. The only people who believe that the Great War has already taken place are people who should buy a ticket to Disneyland. Then he said that when the Great War takes place and it kills 99% of combatants, he says, the next event after that in one hadith after seven months, the other hadith says after seven years. We don't know which one is correct. That the, the, the next event after that would be the Fatul Constantinia, the conquest of Constantinople. And one of the reasons why the name Constantinople has now disappeared from language the name Constantinople has now been consigned to the museums of history is because of this prophecy. So that people would not remember, be conscious of the fact that there is a conquest of Constantinople coming. They change the name and they use an old name of Istanbul, but that will not help them because the name Constantinople is now coming back. I am, I am doing some of the work to restore that name, my scholarship. So then there is a conquest of Constantinople that is coming. I believe and I hope I am wrong. <laughs> I hope I am wrong. I believe that one of the reasons why they wanted Trump out of the presidency was number one, they did not calculate that he would become president. They thought it would have been Hillary Clinton. And they bit their fingers in frustration when he became president because she was a part of their team and he was an outsider. They didn't trust him. He could walk the extra mile. Yes. He could recognize Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. He could change and get the U.S. Embassy in Jerusalem. No other president ever did before him. He could do all of these things. And yet, 
they did not trust him. Among the things that he did that they could not tolerate, he said, CNN is fake news. <laughs> CNN is fake news. I would say, not just CNN, Al Jazeera as well and all the rest of them. Fake news. So they did not trust him. And they did every dirty trick in the world to try to get rid of him. And in the end, they also had a fake elections. They cheated in the election. That's what he said, and I believe he's true. And so they got rid of him. You may have different views from me. It does not change the analysis. And now they have someone they trust who's a part of their team, Joe Biden, as president. But he's an old man. And there is no likely, there is a, there is a possibility that he may not survive for a second term. There's a possibility he might even die during a first term and then this uh, Kamala will become president. I don't think they want to wage a big war against Russia with Kamala as president. So my analysis, and you may differ with me, my analysis is it is more likely than not they would want to provoke the war with Russia. Of course, they don't want to take the blame for the war. So they'll provoke the war <laughs> with Russia sometime during this presidency of Joe Biden. If I am correct, you have very few years left before the Great War takes place. I hope I am wrong. Let me say that again. I hope I am wrong. But if I am right, then this is the situation that we face. Within a few years, the Great War may take place. And if the Great War takes place, what will Turkey do? Because Remember, the event which follows the Great War is connected with Turkey, the conquest of Constantinople. My analysis is that Turkey has been consistent in its profile in following the profile of the Ottoman Empire. If I am wrong, then tell me what is right. This Turkey is faithfully following the profile of the Ottoman Empire. And the Ottoman Empire waged endless wars on Russia. Russia was the eternal enemy. The Orthodox Christian world was the eternal enemy from which, with which we must wage eternal jihad. If I am wrong, Correct me. And so, I expect, in fact, I am confident that when the Great War takes place, Turkey will fight faithfully with NATO. If I am wrong, I am saying to you, come forward and correct me. Challenge me if you wish to. Because this is the time that come for the truth to be proclaimed. We don't have time anymore for wish-washing. We are now at a strategically located moment in history. And this is the time for the voice of truth to be proclaimed fearlessly and loudly. So I am confident in my analysis that I am correct. That in that war which is coming, Turkey will fight with NATO against Russia. Good. What will be the consequence for Turkey? Answer. Turkey will be destroyed. Turkey cannot stand up to Russia. NATO will be defeated. If NATO will be defeated, and this is Surah to Rahman of the Quran, Surah to Rahman of the Quran, Sanafrugu lakum thakalan. I'm going to deal with you, says Allah in the Quran. Both of you laden with sin. Hmm? Who are the two? 
Ya ma'ashar al-jinni wal-ins. That's the answer. Ya ma'ashar al-jinni wal-ins. The world of people who are evil and the world of these demons, demons who are evil, who are in league, in collaboration, in alliance with each other, the jinn. Senafrugu lakum ayyuhathakalan. I am going to deal with both of you. And that's when the that's what going to happen in the great war. Allah will intervene in this great war. And a Russia which is returning to her orthodox Christian heart. And, all, and a Russia which is sincerely trying to follow Jesus, Nabi Isa will be helped by Allah. Because Allah promised them two victories. He says that in Surah Al-Rum, that there are two victories, Lillahi Al-Amr. Lillahi Al-Amr, it is Allah who decides, it is His authority which is supreme. Min qabl wa min ba'd, on both occasions, on both occasions, it is Allah's authority which will deliver victory to Rum. And Rum is Constantinople. You can do what you want. You can jump in the Red Sea if you want. You cannot challenge that. Rome is Constantinople. Get lost with your bogus jihad, your bogus scholarship. I'm telling you to your faces now. Get lost with your bogus scholarship. Rome in the Quran is Constantinople. You can't change that. I'm sorry my voice has to be raised like this. And my voice has to be, my words has to be like bullets because they wouldn't listen to me. The arrogant scholarship, they believe they're right. But the Quran gives knowledge. Supreme knowledge, supreme truth, absolute truth is in the Quran. And I'm inviting them to the Quran. I'm teaching the Quran to them, but they would not listen. That's their arrogance. Truth in the Quran will prevail. Allah has promised two victories to Rome, whether they like it or they don't. Allah has promised two victories to Rome, before and after. And before and after invites us to think the language. There must be something in between, in, con in, in the context of which this is before and that is after. And I have offered an answer in my book. Which book? Constantinople in the Quran. I don't know whether anyone ever wrote a book on this subject before me. I don't know. I don't know. Constantinople in the Quran. And I have never come across a book. But I have written this, thank Allah, Constantinople in the Quran. The first victory was in the time of Nabi Muhammad the Constantinople, which was victorious in the time of the Prophet ﷺ, because of Allah's help, listen to me. It was a Constantinople which for, for the last 300 years was still believing in the Trinity. And for the last 300 years was worshipping Jesus as God and the Son of God. And yet, and yet, and yet Allah helped them. And yet they were victorious. And when they were victorious, we celebrated. Not only we, even Nabi Muhammad celebrated. I know some of you are angry with Allah. I know some of you have more knowledge in your heads than Allah in the Quran. But you get lost. Get lost. You can't stand up in the way of truth. Truth will destroy you. Truth will throw you to the wilderness. And this is truth from the Quran. So you better listen to me now before it's too late for you. The Constantinople, which was victorious at the time of the Prophet, was a Constantinople which already had embraced the Trinity and was worshipping Jesus, the Son of God. And when the second victory is to come, it will still be a Christian people. And they'll still be worshipping 
Jesus as the Son of God and embraced the Trinity. That second victory, this is my opinion. You don't have to agree with me. You should only accept my opinion when you're convinced that I am correct. I don't want brainwash people following me and students. I don't want that. I want those who follow me, I want them to be critical thinkers, like I was with my teacher. Mm -hmm. Russia will defeat NATO in this second, in this world war which is coming. And that victory of Russia would be the second victory of Rome that Allah speaks of in the Quran. So if Russia will, vic will be victorious over NATO, how will Turkey survive? The Turkish army is the biggest army, the biggest military in Europe at this time, I believe. But it will all be gone. It will all be gone, it will be finished. Russia will finish it in the war which is coming, provided that Turkey fights with NATO. I don't see any possibility at all of Turkey departing from its Ottoman profile <laughs> and, and staying out of that great war or fighting with Russia. That's not possible. The Ottoman profile is eternal hatred for Russia and eternal hatred for the Ort Orthodox Christian people. So yes, the Orthodox Christians in Greece are going to smile. They will smile in Thessaloniki when they listen to this video. They'll smile in Athens. They'll smile in Belgrade. But I don't know about the Muslims in Bosnia and Albania and Macedonia and so on, who have adopted this, this adoration for the Ottoman profile. I tell you, there's a surprise coming. The conquest of Constantinople by a Muslim army prophesied by Nabi Muhammad Islam, will take place after the Great War. Let the sheep and the cattle and the goats and the camels believe it already took place in 1452. That's the way sheep and cattle believe. My language is harsh, yes, I know. But what can I do when people refuse to think? Their sheep and cattle. The conquest of Constantinople prophesied by Nabi Muhammad has not as yet taken place. Let the sheep and the cattle bleat about what they want to say. They can't change the truth. And that conquest of Constantinople by a Muslim army Praised by the Prophet, and the commander is praised. That army will be able to conquer Constantinople. Why? Because NATO won't be around at that time. <laughs> and the Turkish army will not be around at that time. I am doing this video to convey this news to you for the first time. I never did it before. This is the bad news because you put so much hope in Turkey because you were brainwashed by the Ottoman Empire. You must wake up and begin to be able to think and use the Quran as your primary source of knowledge. The way I am able to do it, because I am faithful to the Qur'an, I always pray to Allah to give me that knowledge. And He has given to me knowledge, I can't hide it. So I'm able to get away from the brainwashing. Yes, there's much that the Ottoman Empire did that I was always pleased with. And I've spoken about it. But this part of the Ottoman Empire has to be revealed that they work consistently to sabotage the end-time friendship and alliance between the Ummah of Nabi Muhammad Islam, and the Ummah of Nabi Isa Islam, the followers of Jesus. The Muslim army will be able to conquer Constantinople easily at that time 
because there will be Turkish Muslims fighting in that army. Turkish Muslims who have not been brainwashed by the Ottoman Empire and by the present Turkish government. There will be Arab Muslims fighting in that army. It won't be Arab governments. No, no, it will be people fighting in that army. And there will be people from, uh, from Khorasan fighting in that army. There will be people from Algeria fighting in that army. Algeria has a backbone. So it will be a people's army, not a government army that will liberate Constantinople. Finally, you know my views on this subject. I know that all, all of Pakistan was celebrating, yes, because of this phenomenal brainwashing when Hagia Sophia was converted to a masjid for the second time, shamefully, disgracefully, manifestly, sinfully, all of Pakistan was congratulating Erdogan. I know about this total brainwashing, but the Pakistani people have a nice way about them. That when the truth is presented to them from the Quran, and they will recognize it to be the truth, they accept it. Despite all the brainwashing. This is my experience in six weeks that I've been here. Six weeks and not a single Pakistani has come forward to challenge me. Say, no, you're wrong. We're right. Not, it has not happened. This is a wonderful thing about Pakistan. So you know my view. That the conversion of Hagia Sophia the first time to a masjid was shameful and disgraceful and sinful. And the second time was even more shameful and more disgraceful and more <coughs> sinful. And so why would we conquer Constantinople after the Great War? You may have a different answer. I had a different answer when I began lecturing on this subject, it was perhaps 2011. Ten years ago, I gave my first lecture on this subject uh, at the International Islamic University in Malaysia. It was in the masjid and there were a few thousand students present and there were lots of Turkish professors sitting right in front of me. I don't think they enjoyed that lecture. <laughs> so at that time, this is my view, and now different, I have a different view, because I'm growing, alhamdulillah, in understanding the subject. I now say the primary reason why we will conquer Constantinople <laughs> is because we'll then return Hagia Sophia to the Orthodox Christian people. No people weep for Hagia Sophia more than the Greek. The Russians weep, the Serbs weep, the Romanians weep, the Bulgarians weep, the Armenians weep, but the Greek, they weep the most. That's why I promise you, as soon as the COVID restrictions on travel are removed, I will come to visit you in Greece, inshallah, and I'm going to come up to Thessaloniki, inshallah, definitely, inshallah because you weep the most for Hagia Sophia. So you will be the happiest of all when we conquer Constantinople and they can't stop us. And we return Hagia Sophia to you and they cannot stop us. And when we return Hagia Sophia to you, at that time, if not before, you will remember me and you will remember what we, this truth has come from the Quran and this truth which makes you so happy has come from a man named Muhammad you would recognize that this is indeed a prophet of the one God the whole orthodox Christian world will, <laughs> will forget all the years of brainwashing this truth has come from this man he is indeed a prophet of the one God. And this Quran has to be the word of the one God. The differences between us and this Quran, 
the Lord God will explain to us on Judgment Day. You do not have to join the community of people who follow Muhammad You still remain Christians. But now between us and you, there'll be friendship, there'll be love, and there'll be alliance. And that is what the enemy does not want. We pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may bring that day soon when the world of Islam and the world of Orthodox Christianity will reconcile despite 600 years of brutal Ottoman bogus jihad and oppression, relentless oppression, despite all of that, that you and I, you and us will re reconcile and there'll be friendship between us, as there's already friendship between me and many Orthodox Christians, alhamdulillah. And there'll be love between us, and there'll be an alliance. And it is this alliance between us, those who follow Muhammad, Allah's blessing be upon him, and those who follow Jesus, Allah's blessing be upon him. It is this alliance which will take us to the end of history and to the triumph of truth. Thank you. Wassalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.